Welcome back, nerds. We're your hosts this week. I'm Chad. And I'm Jake. This week we are sponsored by Crybaby Craig's Hot Sauce, the best damn hot sauce around. We're also sponsored by Ray's Energy Drinks, an awesome energy drink with zero calories, zero sugar, and zero crash. Uh, this week we will be talking about uh, upcoming Marvel <laughs> stuff. They dropped a new trailer for all of Phase 4, and we're going to dive into that a little bit. Yeah, and this week we'll also be talking, uh, well, talking with, we'll be joined later in this episode uh, by a very special guest who is using his nerdiness to give back to his community. In the coolest way, yeah. That's so awesome. Yeah. Uh, so let's get into it. This is the All Things Nerd Podcast. Welcome back, you nerds, to another uh, episode of the All Things Nerd podcast, your weekly dive into all things nerd. So, uh, Jake. That's me. What's up? <laughs> yeah, how's your week been? <laughs> uh, it's been pretty cool, man. Um, you know, uh, work, life. Balance? I feel like I... <laughs> what did you say? I said balance because you said work balance. and life, like the work, work life. life. Yeah. That was a bad joke. I'm sorry. <clears throat> no, it's been pretty chill. Uh, something really exciting is is that I'm coming out there to Oh Stupido in like Hell four yeah. days. Yeah, yeah, like four and a half days. You, you come out uh, Friday morning. Early Friday. I have to be, guys, I have to be at the airport at like 4.30 in the morning, which means I have to leave my house at like earlier than that. It's going to suck. Because of the time difference, I get to sleep in <clears> until like... <throat> You know, nine thirty, nine, nine. Yeah. So I can take my dog out. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> yeah. But yeah, yeah. Uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun, though. I'm super excited yeah. about it. We're gonna probably do a little drinking, and by a little, I mean yeah. you know, not so little. Yeah, like a very minute amount, like <laughs> less than usual. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, but. Yeah, so it'll be the one of the first. It will be not one of the first. It'll be the first episode where we're back in the same room since uh, I moved, uh, uh-huh. which will be awesome for next week. Um, and then we also have our live stream on the fifteenth, which is going to be awesome because uh, I checked the weather this morning and it changed from what I told you, Jake. It's going to be a uh, like sunny and seventy. Yeah, Instead yeah, I'm excited. Of rainy. A little, a little bit of a difference. Today, with... it sucked. Yeah, <laughs> this will actually be the also the <laughs> the first live stream or the yeah since back together since our first one. Yeah, I mean, granted, done... this is only our third live episode. Yeah, but we, that's we've done crazy, like yeah. small live streams, or I have of like gameplay. But yeah, this yeah. we'll be back together. <clears throat> We'll probably also be doing some like Twitch, like video gaming while I'm out there, and uh, absolutely, we're gonna play yeah. some zombies for sure. Maybe some uh, because we've talked so much already on the show about Marvel, we we might have to play some Marvel Avengers, uh, yeah. and stream it and see how that goes. <clears throat> um, but yeah, we're just gonna get a little rowdy right. and. Have we're gonna be fun. total. We're gonna be total dorks with cameras <laughs> for two days straight. We're, we're gonna, gonna be those people that you laugh at that walk around, you know, the town square with a camera and like, oh, yeah. what am I doing? <laughs> it's like that. That's us. That will we're, be us. We're kind of hoping to get some like interaction with people, <clears throat> maybe like while while we're live streaming see if we can get like maybe some trivia or something going or yeah i think that'd be fun to to ask some random people yeah uh on the streets some random nerd trivia and uh yeah uh some of the some of the non-live stream videos of that will probably end up on our patreon page just of some behind the scenes you know to to give Mm -hmm. back to to those of you that subscribe uh on a monetary value also, yeah. thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> yes, Jesus. And then we also, not thank you, Jesus, but like, thank you. 
And then I said Jesus because I kept clearing my throat into my microphone. Well, I mean, if so. if that's what you believe, then you can say that too. That's fine. <laughs> We're not here to judge. <laughs> Unless you're a piece of shit, then we'll judge hard. Like, we'll be hard when we judge. So hard. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, Mom. <laughs> yeah, sorry, Mom. <laughs> I'm glad you said that because we didn't... For our second segment, uh, we actually got a chance to to do an interview with an independent comic book writer and artist and illustrator. And uh, we weren't able to sneak that into our interview, so I'm glad we got it out of the way right away. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> right away. Oh, a bit, a bit strong for you? Did you bring some a extra bit. to fix it? Put a little pizzazz in there by accident. We'll add a little more soda here. And so, are you saying that, like, if you could taste jazz hands, that what you, that's what you just had? Oh, it's this way. Oh, this is spirit fingers. Damn spirit it! Fi- yes, spirit I got fingers. <laughs> jazz hands. Damn it! Jazz hands <laughs> is the exact same thing as a <clears throat> clapping for someone that knows ASL. I tried to phrase it. I can cut that. I tried my best. I'll cut that. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I'll cut that. I tried to do it the oh. nicest way possible. But I will cut that. Yeah. It was. It was probably fine until I went. Oh. oh. <laughs> well. You, but you know what we should do. You should. I will should. save that clip, send it to you, and you can send it to her. And if she says yes, then I'll leave it in. I was gonna say you should leave everything that we just did in except for what we were talking about so everyone's like wait what oh <laughs> what did he get <laughs> uh, how was <laughs> other than this fucking train wreck that just happened how was your, how was your fucking week been man uh it's been fine i've been cooped up a lot it's been kind of rainy this whole week and uh snowing a little bit <clears throat> this morning you snapped me yeah, it was so gross. I woke up and I was like, oh, it's raining. That's going to be fun. And then I like got dressed to take my dog out. And literally in that amount of time, it turned to freezing rain and snow. And I was like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I was not excited about it. She wasn't excited about it. When I took her outside, like she literally just like, there's a tree right outside the door <laughs> of the apartment. And she just like went under that and like squatted and peed and then just stood there and was like, are, are we yeah. done? <laughs> and by and by, she and Chad is talking about his girlfriend, not his dog. Yeah, so I don't have yeah. a dog. Yeah. Oh, you can't see her. She's on the edge of the bed. Yeah, I don't have a dog. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck. Oh yeah. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. So, but also <clears throat> this week, Jake, Marvel put out a a, a promo video yeah. for Phase Four. Yeah. But only of their feature films, not yeah. not touching on their TV shows, so we don't get anything about, like, Loki, Hawkeye, Miss Marvel, but all of the films that are included in, in Phase 4. You know, you know what the, anno- the one annoying thing about that was, for me, is that they released that preview the day <laughs> after we recorded our last episode. <laughs> I was yeah. like, oh, god damn you guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. But, and then I've seen it everywhere since. Yes. Yeah, yeah. But so exciting. I mean, even though they're just basically like very <clears throat> small clips and the title reviews of the, which we'll get into a little bit later on, but. Yeah. And like. Or is it now? A second. I mean. Is that now? It's that was now. kind of your segue. <laughs> that was my segue. Yeah. I, at some point I was supposed to say, so let's talk Marvel, but I didn't do it. Uh, <laughs> On top of his game. We're really good at this. Uh, <clears throat> so yeah, this is... Uh, at, at what? the This? Both. Or just talking? All of it. More hmm. than first. So we're... Um, excuse me. Talking comes second. Just like, never mind. I'm not gonna say we already apologized to our mothers. It's Mother's <laughs> Day today while we're recording, so uh, can't be too gross. So this is uh, Phase Four. This is the feature film part of Phase Four. <laughs> Obviously, we're in Phase Four with the TV shows. Uh, we had WandaVision, 
uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, Loki coming next month in June, and uh, but these are the films that are that are coming in the near future for Phase Four, and we get the title reviews reveals of these movies uh, along with uh, a couple clips here and there, um, and fucking. I went from six to midnight pretty quick. <laughs> he had to tuck it in his waistband is what he had to do. Yeah. Yeah. I came he- in my belly button. I hear it feels <laughs> great. <laughs> He's doing it right now. <laughs> Sorry, mom. Um, <laughs> but I mean, some of them we already knew the, the official titles for like <clears throat> Dr. Strange, the multiverse of madness, you know, mm-hmm. Thor, Love and Thunder. Yeah. Um, Eternals. Eternals. Yeah. <laughs> Eternals. Eternals. Uh, <laughs> Spider-Man, No Way Home. No Way Home. Yeah. Uh, yep. uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, Volume 3. I mean. But some of the cooler of ones was that. Black Panther 2. Yeah, which, uh, which they're calling Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. And a lot of it uh, from You didn't what, even do it, man. Come on. You think that a duck should be doing that? Yeah. Yeah. That's a Everybody side reference to something that you might get later. If not, it's yeah. Fine. Um. I mean, um, we got Guardians. Wakanda Forever for Black Panther two yeah. instead of just Black Panther two. We get instead of Captain Marvel two. The oh, Marvels. Marvels, which is dope. Cause which is. You you give away one, I'll give away the other. Okay. Go ahead. So, uh, in the the logo for the film, uh, instead of showing Captain Marvel's uh, Star Force logo, it shows a modified one that mimics Monica Rambeau's photon from the comics. And who's Monica Rambeau? She is the daughter of Maria Lambeau, a.k.a. Uh, Carol Danvers' best friend from the 90s and before that. But uh, she was also uh, in WandaVision. She was the one that gained powers by pushing through the hex. And we got to see a glimpse of her powers uh, throughout the, the later episodes of WandaVision. But so we're going to get to see more of her. Mm-hmm. And what and, else? And also, at the end of the logo, they throw <clears throat> an S on the end of it. And the way that the S looks is from uh, Miss Marvel, which we know we get the TV show uh, coming out on Disney+. Plus. Uh, so the late, next... Late this year, early next year. Yeah. They don't so have the next official release. But... <clears throat> the next Captain Marvel movie is <clears throat> just called The Marvels, and it's going to be Captain Marvel... Monica Rambeau, which her name is... I'm assuming... I don't know why I keep finger-gunning you. I'm like, what's her name? Her name. Uh, I think that they're going to go with Photon. Photon. But in the and comics, then... she's had a handful of superhero names. She even replaces uh, Captain Marvel at one point in the com- in certain comic storylines. So. And then we get Miss Marvel, which is a teenage Pakistani kid, which I think is amazing. Uh, Pakistani they're... American, yeah, which is also even, I think, cooler. She's yeah. the daughter of an immigrant. Yeah, it's gonna be cool. It's yeah. gonna be really, really cool. And her we favorite superhero different... is yeah. Captain Marvel. Yeah, so she styles her costume kind of after Captain Marvel. A Colors, bit. name, yeah, yeah. And but what's really cool about uh, Miss Marvel? <clears throat> is now in the official MCU, we get the Inhumans. Because she's, well, speculation. But she's technically an Inhuman in the comics. So hopefully they go with that and introduce the Inhumans. Because they were introduced in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and in the video game. But It was also a TV show, too. It only lasts oh, yeah, like one. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, they only yeah. got one season, and then it was canceled because uh, it sucked. Well, that's not why it was canceled. It was canceled oh. before it released <laughs> uh, because Marvel was like, "Nope, we're not doing basic cable anymore. ABC, <clears throat> you don't get any more Marvel rights." That's why it was canceled. But yes, also the 
TV show was not good. <laughs> Even though it was more true to the comics about the the moon people. Um, well, move, moving on just a little bit further here, uh, we also get uh, Ant Man. Uh, the title for this movie is Ant Man uh, Quantum Mania, which uh, I, I but we believe that we are going to see. Well, we know this technically is Kang the Conqueror anything. is coming to film. Oh, yeah, we, we don't do know, know anything. We do know that because yeah. it's been confirmed. <laughs> Kang the Conqueror is coming to the big screen. That's going to be huge. I also oh. know the actor that is playing him. Uh, I forgot his name just now, and that's really dumb of me. But he was the main character in the HBO series. Um, Lovecraft, right? Lovecraft Country. Yeah, Lovecraft, Lovecraft Country. Country. Yeah. yeah, sorry. Yeah. yeah, That guy. Yeah, that's be awesome. Phenomenal. Yeah. And then we also get our first... Uh, I almost finger gunned you again. What the hell is going on with me? What is that? What is that? I've never done that to anybody in my entire life. And now I'm just like five times in a row. Like, hey. Hey, but if you do it, at least make a clicking noise or a pew, 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 pew. Chicky later. Chicky later. <laughs> You're such a dork, man. Pew, 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 pew. That was a dazed and confused reference. You didn't catch it. It's oh, okay. no, I didn't. I went straight to Grandma's Boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was like when uh, Matthew McConaughey is trying to holler at the redhead. And then the crazy stoner dude with like super long hair and like the golfer's hat he's like check you later and they're like why'd you do that man so, it's funny I'm sorry I was just being a dick about it uh, no Days and Confuse is great <laughs> um, but the we, big reveal you go, ahead, you go for well, it well we get our first uh, it's kind of a teaser for the Eternals Oh, the trailer for Eternals. Yeah. Well, I thought it's we not even a full trailer. It's literally yeah. just we get a couple of little clips, yeah. little clips about them coexisting in the past, <clears throat> in modern day, in the Wild West, because yeah. we know that the show is going to span yeah. centuries. Yep. And what's really cool though is that the the director now I feel like a dick also because I should have looked this up. Uh, she is the first Oscar winner director to helm a, a Marvel film. And what's cool is that there's so little CGI that goes into this film, supposedly. Like, majority of the the shots of the landscapes and stuff like that like it was shot real time with practical effects yeah. which for me <clears throat> i mean i'm a, a photographer and videographer partially amateurly let's just say that uh so like i'm excited just to see like incredible cinematography that uses practical effects and I've... it looked good just from those little bits but we also get some shang chi in, oh, yeah. in this yeah. teaser um, i think i think sorry just to go back to eternals for a second just because i have to mention this uh yeah, i know good. a lot a lot of the people who listen to this are like my family members and stuff uh who are also indian but <clears throat> kumail nanjiani who is going to play one of the eternals uh is hiding on well not hiding but the, the whole thing is that they're all blending in on earth and he's blending in as a Bollywood actor. Uh, so this, which is blows my mind, we're going to get a, lo- a very big um, Bollywood like music, See? like song, like yeah. in a Marvel movie, which is fucking awesome. Yeah, that, as someone that is not of Indian descent, again, duck. Um what? I I just went dot. You said duck. Well, yeah, because white. And, I know. I get it. I get it. And then you made me look like a fucking dick by like... Mm. <laughs> Thank you. You're fine. Thank you, Jay. You're fine. Um, well, if you say so. Um, <laughs> I even forgot where I was going with this. You said someone who is not of Indian descent. 
Well, I'm just I'm looking forward to it. I think that that's awesome to yeah. just get. Obviously, like in the comics, the Marvel comics, like some of the the diversity, especially from the older comics, is very stereotypical. But to actually get it in an MCU film is yeah. fucking awesome. Yeah, super stoked about it. Yeah. But yeah, and then like you said, Shang-Chi is coming. I just wanted to bring that little part up because I'm I'm half Indian and I think that's going to be Absolutely. so cool. Absolutely. And Grew I, up on I'm Bollywood excited movies, for it. So. When you told me that, because like, <clears throat> like I haven't watched many Bollywood films, but like yeah. they're so... Like, there's so much energy behind them. Mm. It's fantastic. I'm excited to actually see that, like... In a fucking Marvel movie, dude. That's well, crazy. that, but also just outside of a Bollywood film. Bollywood, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't... Not even superhero, just a mainstream Hollywood yeah. film. Which is fucking dope. But yeah, and then we get Shang-Chi. Yeah, the full trailer for Shang-Chi is out, and that looks so sick. Yeah, and... Like, you'll you'll hear a little bit later on, Jake and yeah. I, uh, uh, the the gentleman that we introduced, his name is Jerry Ma. He's fucking dope. Yeah. Uh, but uh, at first, Shang Chi was everyone was like, oh, it's just gonna be a cliche like kung fu movie, but it looks so good. It establishes a lot of backstory, even just in the trailer. Hmm. And it just, it's going to be so cool. I'm so excited for this. But how does the, how does the, the Marvel Phase 4 trailer teaser end, Jake? Fantastic Four. We finally get, I mean, we don't get any clips or anything. They just show the logo for Fantastic Four, which if you are an avid listener, uh, Chad and I think, we think anyway, we don't know anything about these movies other than what's been released, but we strongly feel that the Fantastic Four are the group of astronauts in WandaVision that Tyler... Hayward. Hayward uh, said went missing during the snap. Yeah. Um, so I'm pretty sure that's the Fantastic Four, and I'm pretty sure, they're, I'm pretty sure we're pretty sure that they're going to be the last movie in Phase 4, and that's going to really bring in whoever the big bad is going to be. Yeah, moving forward, but also on top of that, <clears throat> just the fact that it's included in this teaser. Yeah. Yeah. Means that we're going to get Fantastic 4 so much sooner than what everybody thought. Cuz yeah. most of these movies are going to come out this year, next year, early 20, 2023. 2023, yeah. So over I the would assume for two, yeah. In the next 2 years. We'll have all of these movies plus the TV shows that we're already watching. And and a couple that we didn't even mention. Like, we get Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Yeah. We get, obviously, this year we get Spider-Man No Way Home. Mm-hmm. And Doctor Strange Multiverse Doctor Strange, of Madness. Yeah. Yep. So, they call it the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Not just the Marvel Cinematic Movies. Because yeah. it's so vast and expansive. And we're going to get to see it we're gonna see him oh yeah oh i can't point to that (laughs) i I, like put my finger up like i was gonna point at thing and my hand disappeared oh that's embarrassing (laughs) Uh, for for those of you who don't watch the youtube channel uh this is i was pointing at uh ben grimm who is behind me uh yeah yeah, the thing (laughs) you will but yeah so we're we're gonna get to see that we're gonna get to see like Jake said, we think that that's really going to introduce the big bad for the next phase or few, <clears throat> which is just exciting. Yeah, because if you remember when they originally introduced Thanos was in the first uh, Avengers. Avengers movie, and he, you know, which he is closed, what he closed out. He went, phase one. Yeah, yeah, he literally went all the way to the end. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking phase four is going to be a build up. And then Fantastic Four is going to introduce who the big bad's going to be. And yeah. in my opinion, I think it's going to be Galactus. I think that you're right. Yeah. And I don't like to like fully agree with you on everything. <laughs> uh, but there's 
well, who else is it going to be? It can't. Doctor Doom can't be the big bad. He'll he'll be oh, a he, big he bad. He will be a sure. bad. Yeah. He will be a a bigger bad moving forward. But I don't think he's. He'll be so bad. The big bad. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so with that being <laughs> said, uh, Jake, why don't you uh, tell yeah. them a little bit about our first sponsor before we get into the next part? All right, so we're gonna, uh, you know, plug uh, Crybaby Craig's again here. So listen up for a minute, and uh, you'll hear all about it. Yeah. Hey, you nerds, do you love spice? Supporting small businesses. What about enhancing the flavor of your favorite foods? If you said yes to any of those. Our good friends over at Crybaby Craig's have the perfect solution for you. Crybaby Craig's is a pickled habanero and garlic hot sauce that goes perfectly with your favorite foods, adding the perfect amount of spice and enhancing the flavor of everything it touches. Started in Minneapolis by Craig back in 2012, Crybaby Craig's has become a Minneapolis and Minnesota staple in the sauce world. So head over to crybabycraigs.com and order yours today. Welcome back, guys. Uh, To finish out this week's episode, we have an awesome guest. He is a graphic designer, illustrator, and he's working on a new reimagination of The Monkey King as a graphic novel. Yeah. So, Jake, go ahead and introduce him. Yeah, so, guys, this is uh, Jerry Ma. And let's give him a a special uh, cheers and welcome. Hey, absolutely. (laughs) <laughs> yeah so thanks jerry for joining us this week oh thanks for having me seriously it's an honor to be on man yeah man we're super excited about this do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself who is jerry ma uh so i'm just a, a graphic designer and a illustrator i'm new york based um I, I make my real living designing uh graphic t-shirts um so i'm currently working on a few different lines of t-shirts for the NBPA in China. Uh, I'm just about, I just started a new project for Vibe Magazine Hong Kong and B2 Music in Hong Kong. Um, and then, yeah, and then in, in between, I try to do uh, some comic stuff. And I also have my own line of t-shirts that I make. Awesome. Now, so I read that you were, you're drawn to art from a very young age. Um, what what drove you to actually pursue art as your life or as your career? You know, um, growing up, my family, we did not have too much money. So, you know, my father immigrated here from Taiwan, and he came here with literally just $1,000 uh, and essentially lived the American dream. That being said, we I have two brothers, so we got $1 a week allowance, which even back then wasn't much. But if we pooled it together, we could go get a couple comics. And that was kind of like kind of a release from life, honestly. You know, we, you got to enter a whole new world um, and your creativity, your imagination just goes wild. So my older brother, who was kind of the, uh, the, the leader of this, he championed us into like, you know, Dungeons and Dragons comics. He also forced me and my younger brother to play sports. Uh, he really kind of showed us all the things like a teenager, well, at least I guess a teenager at the time would be doing. Yeah. Okay. So he really like taught me and my younger brother about music, comics, books, movies, everything. My dad was just, he was working literally from like 7 a.m. till 11.30 p.m. every day. Oh my like goodness. seven days a week. Wow. That's insane. Yeah, so... Uh, so yeah, that's how, so that's how we got into comic books, just because we really didn't have much in the means of recreation, if you will. You know? Yeah. Well, do you do you have a favorite comic? Oh like, yeah, like I, grew a, up, I I grew up on Parman and Iron Fist, man. John Burns, Parman and Iron Fist is everything to me. Oh yeah. Okay. That, that's oh, yeah. Like iconic. Also, my f- single favorite comic of all time is uh, Teen Titans X Men by Walt Simonson. That to me was uh, kind of. That's the, awesome. Yeah, the yeah. comic to, to read. Yeah. That's so do, awesome. Do you get into like like TV shows and stuff too then? Like do you watch Titans on uh, HBO? Yeah, I, like so um, like most, probably most comic illustrators or most graphic designers, most illustrators, 
you're gonna have multiple monitors while mm -hmm. I'm working. Like I have my Cintiq, which is literally right here, and then this is my iMac monitor. So when I'm working on either or, I just have like movies or TV shows playing on them. I'll plow through like a season of Game of Thrones in one day. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's just on and I just let it, you know, <clears throat> watch all every season of Game of Thrones about ten times. Literally. Oh my, oh my god, goodness. yeah. <laughs> I'm a, I'm on my like third time right now. My girlfriend has never watched it before, so I'm getting her to watch it right now. So, <laughs> yeah. How did you feel about the ending of Game of Thrones? I mean when I well, it started falling apart for me around like season five and after. When they ran out of uh, source material. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. the first four seasons really are mad. <clears throat> yeah. Like, oh, they're seasons amazing. three and four are just hands down unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But then after a while, eh, yeah. But <laughs> when I, so I took a break from it for like three months. <laughs> it's a long break. <laughs> And I watched the last season over again. And I was like, after I took a break and rewatched it again, I was like, I mean, it's not awful. You're less upset about it? It's a little more acceptable to me after I had some time to think about it. Sure. <laughs> Process it. You know, yeah. look, it's, it's obviously it's not great. The end. Yeah. <laughs> but it wasn't as painful the 10th uh, the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you get to soften your blow a little. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Uh, well, to get back on track a little bit, what about the Monkey King made you want to reimagine it? I mean, the Monkey King is uh, it's a cherished, and I mean a cherished story, mythical story for Chinese Americans, or, or I should just say Chinese people, or probably even just Asian people in general. Sure. But for me growing up, you know, uh, as an Asian American, we even, you know, forget about back then, even now, we don't really get to see too many stories that reflect our culture or people that look like us. Yeah. So growing up, having the Monkey King available to me was unbelievable. Uh, the fact that my mom would watch it with me meant everything, you know. Um, he's essentially China's answer to Spider-Man. You know, he's like the first Chinese superhero, the first Asian superhero. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's always been dear to my heart. <coughs> I've always kind of wanted to tell the story, but never really had the nuts to do it. <laughs> uh, but that being said, uh, as you guys probably know by now, the Monkey King gets rebooted like at least three times a year. Yeah, yeah. Some, in some kind of fashion, whether it's, whether it's a book or, or a TV show or a movie, it's definitely rebooted multiple times every year. Uh, and every time it gets rebooted, I can't help but feel like all they do is they focus on the kung fu and the action aspect of it, which I understand why. And they give you know the Monkey King like shinier armor and more intricate armor. And again, I understand why. But they kind of lost the gist of the story, which the true at the heart of the story, they actually China was kind of in trouble back then, in, at least in this version of the story, in the original story, and they were sent. The Tripitaka, who's the name of the monk, the monk was sent to uh, find people to help him journey west to India to discover Buddhism, take those teachings, bring it back to China to save China. Um, okay. So, of course, there's action. Of course, there's Kung Fu. But it's kind of about enlightenment. I know it's kind of corny, but to me, it's more about like magic and adventure that a lot of these reboots have kind of lost sight of. So my version of it not only did I, do I, am I putting it in uh, Chinatown, New York today, and their journey west is to Chinatown in San Francisco. That's awesome. Um, but, you know, I'm trying to focus more on the adventure aspect. I'm trying to make it a little more wacky, a little more funny. You know, before I started, as an independent comic creator, I'm not embarrassed to say, like, you know, as a, I don't want to say like a wannabe, but an aspiring comic artist, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, everyone tends to make, their, they, whenever they make a new project, they make it dark, edgy, violent, you know, make it more violent, like John Wick, you know? <laughs> and the truth is, like, what the fuck? So are we allowed to curse yeah, on this? Yeah, oh, hell fucking yeah. swear away, bro. Yeah. Honestly, like, what the fuck do I know about killing someone? <laughs> like, seriously, <laughs> I don't know shit about killing, taking someone's life with my own hands. Right. Or, you know, pulling the trigger of a gun. I don't know any of that. I, I'm just making shit up when I do that. 
Yeah. So what I do know is like drinking, eating, you know, kind of like having a goofy time and all that. And I'm like, you know what? I think I'm going to speak to that part of my personality. It's probably, it's going to be a little more organic, you know? And the Monkey King, he is like kind of like the god of mischief. So mm -hmm. he should be funny. He shouldn't yeah. be Bruce Lee, you know? Everyone wants him to be Bruce Lee, but he's Jackie Chan, you know? Yeah. So like, I wanted to focus more on that part of it. And I think it's so far somewhat successful with that. Oh, yeah. yeah I, sure. Even though, unfortunately, I watched the, in your words, the shit version of The Monkey King, <laughs> uh, I did. That, that, that was one of the things that I did pull from that is that he's a, he's a troublemaker for sure. Yeah, I mean, uh, I would recommend uh, A Chinese Odyssey starring Stephen Chow, the oh, guy yeah. that's in uh, yeah. Shaolin Cowboy Kung Fu. Uh, yeah, from the, like, from the from the 80s, right? <laughs> and uh, Kung Fu Hustle. That oh, yeah. is, to me, by far, like, the best movie version oh yeah, yeah. Okay. i wrote it down already i'm definitely checking it out that makes me so angry because there was like five different ones to choose from and i was we, like we were talking about it uh the other day pay? like we both pulled them up we're like which one we don't know there's so many <laughs> you know i even watched you're gonna laugh but as part of my uh research for this comic I, obviously i went back and i bought a bunch of children's books and that was <laughs> i'll explain why later but i watched there's a netflix series of the monkey king yeah, and it's starring like all non-Asian people. Oh, the new and, one, right? Yeah. So I remember when that came out, it, it got a lot of grief because like it's a Chinese myth. It's like yeah, and they whitewashed Chinese it. Myth. That was like a huge but thing for it. I actually watched that intentionally, and I sat through like eight episodes of that so that I knew what not to do. <laughs> <laughs> and I paid so much attention to it. I swear to God, just so I wouldn't make you the almost scene. finished the series. There's only ten episodes. <laughs> Because I, I read about it, and then I read about the controversy behind it, and I was like, maybe not this one. Yeah. <laughs> well, we, when I, we talked I about it, Jake was like, yeah, we shouldn't I'm, do this one. <laughs> I want to make sure I don't do any of the mistakes that they made. And yeah. all kidding aside, I learned a lot from watching it. Yeah. So, I mean, we've kind of already started talking about, you know, your, your reimagining the the monkey king kind of taking it back to like its moral roots um so tell us tell us about the kickstarter sure so uh it all began uh back in one of the three things i got to do in 2020 was i had a solo art show at pearl river here in chinatown new york which pearl river is like an iconic new york store and gallery and um more importantly it's iconic in chinatown so I had an art show there, which consisted of eight pieces, uh, all on the Monkey King in Chinatown, like 80s, 90s Chinatown, New York. And while I was setting up the show, there's like, you know, they have uh, like three or four different people that work at the gallery that were helping me out. Um, and they're all, I want to say like in their 20s. So they're pretty young. And none of them have read or watched Monkey King. And the reason was because all the reboots, they just kind of get, you know, shinier armor, more Kung Fu. It just seems kind of stupid, a lot of CGI. And they were looking at my art show and they're like, you know, if because in my art show I have Monkey wearing like a hoodie and he's got these Nikes on and everything. And it was a little more relatable to them. And they were all saying like, if this was like a film or a comic, we would happily read it or watch it. You know? I was like, yeah, okay, whatever. I'm like, cool. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Good idea, little girl. You know? <laughs> um, and then I'm like, you know, that, that, that's a ton of work. I, I, you know, like whatever. I got a life to live. I can't do that, you know. Um, but then the pandemic hit and the lockdown comes and I'm at home. And I was just like, well, fuck. I'm just going to yeah. do it now. Like I'm going to stay productive during this lockdown. And I started working on the book. And, you know, um, it's a lot about Chinatown, New York. It's very New York centric. Um, it's a lot about, you know, self-discovery and all that stuff. But it really is like kind of my love letter to Chinatown, New York, as Chinatown is getting a little gentrified now and it's changing. And it's, I wanted to kind of remember the Chinatown that I grew up with and loved, you know, um, mm -hmm. which is why. So with this Kickstarter, our stretch goals are a little more unique than probably other Kickstarters. Um, you know, I, I was kind of thinking like instead of giving people like bookmarks and, stickers and 
stuff that they really don't care for. Maybe some people care about that. I, I would think I'd like to think, but instead of wasting my money on that, why don't I actually give some of the money back to small businesses in Chinatown? You know, uh, my family, we have a small business ourselves and we know how <clears throat> difficult times are nowadays and we don't have a restaurant. You know, th there's a lot of uh, sympathy for restaurants and justifiably <clears throat> so, but there are more businesses than just restaurants, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And this is kind of my way to, I mean, it's not much money that we're donating, but it's what I can do. So, and you know, during, uh, after the shootings at the spa in Atlanta, which was back in like mid March, mm, yeah. like most Asian Americans, I think I was pretty upset, pretty angry. And I kind of made an emotional decision. I was like, you know, the next two weeks for the rest of this month, I'm just going to donate all the money I make from my online sales to like stop Asian hate. And it ended up being like 2,500 bucks, which again, I know it's not like a ton of money, but for me, it's kind of a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, so I was so proud to like donate. I, I go to this website, click donate. I was like, awesome. But then I'm just like, it also felt a little hollow, you know? Um, you don't really see anyone get any help. So then I decided for these stretch goals, I'm just going to go ahead and hand deliver $250 cash to X amount of businesses in Chinatown. And like, for example, um, one of them that I'm definitely going to do is the Chinatown ice cream factory because I grew up eating that ice cream. So I'm going to go in there and buy like one scoop of ice cream for like three bucks or whatever it costs. I'm just going to give them like $253 and tell them to keep a change. <laughs> like, yeah, dude. Like, and then I, I, on my way out, I'll explain to them why I'm doing that so they don't think I'm crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm just going to do that to like a whole a bunch of small businesses. I'm just going to buy the cheapest thing there and then tell them to keep the change, you know? Fuck and, yeah, man. That's incredible. I just want them to know yeah. like, they're remembered. They're not forgotten. And hopefully it can kind of inspire other people to just do what they can, you know? Yeah. Well, we'll we will definitely be donating to the, to the Kickstarter. We're also, you know, we'll put yeah. it on our website and stuff and hopefully yeah. we can get some people to well, donate as well. I mean, I got the link from, from you and Alan, but yeah, we'll include it in our, our show notes for the next several weeks while the Kickstarter is still running. Yeah. Um, but on top of that, yeah, I mean, we... <laughs> we we do giveaways for all of our live episodes mm -hmm. so we we already talked about you know we're gonna hop on there and you know well, let's give it. how about we give away some t-shirts that i made hell yeah hey you if you want yeah you want cool cool that, that then yeah, we'll yeah, definitely hey, do this this is my player select t-shirt uh it's a street basically a street fire themed shirt with all the fighters <laughs> that i wish were actually you know, in the game, you got the Shogun of Harlem, you got Eco from the Raid, you got Andre the Giant, you got oh, yeah. Mr. Anybody Miyagi. want a peanut? Mr. Miyagi. <laughs> you got a bunch of killer fighters, and, you know, who, who do you choose, you know? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's badass. <laughs> yeah, we yeah, let's totally give away. Let, let's give away uh, three t-shirts. Three is my favorite number. Beautiful. Perfect. Yeah. All right, guys. Sorry to take you out of that interview with Jerry. We do just need to quickly talk about our second sponsor this week, which is Ray's Energy Drinks. So please just listen up for a quick bit. You'll hear a little bit about it, and then we'll get right back into it. What's up, nerds? I wanted to take a minute and talk to you about Ray's Energy, an incredible energy drink that provides max energy with zero crash. Ray's Energy takes a giant leap of faith with instilling a high-quality formula to bring a powerful yet sustained energetic experience to help you push your workouts and focus to the next level. Perfect for anyone at any time and powered by their refresh formula technology, Ray's Energy delivers a performance enhancing energy drink that aids in multiple different categories that include targeted focus, better recovery time, improved clean energy levels, and a boost in stamina and hydration. But most importantly, Every can of Ray's Energy has absolutely zero calories, zero sugar, and zero carbohydrates to give you a smarter and healthier option. So don't settle for an energy drink that contains more sugar and carbohydrates than you can count. Instead, head over to repsports.com. That's R-E-P-P-S-P-O-R-T-S dot com and use the promo code NERDPODCAST at checkout for 15% off your order. Or if you don't know what you want, go ahead and click the link that's in the description for, to get a $50 sample pack for free. All you do is you cover the cost of shipping. Again, make sure you use promo code NERDPODCAST at checkout to let them know that we sent you. 
All right, guys, let's get back into it with Jerry. Fantastic. Yeah, so my my next question already kind of got answered, so I'm going to skip it and skip ahead to my next one. Um, but so if your your vision of Monkey King ever well, got... Hang, hang on, Jake. Sorry not to cut what? you off. Um, <clears throat> just because you kind of already talked about how when you were at uh, Pearl River, you know, you just started with, you know, a, a few prints that kind of garnered the the momentum for this entire project. Oh, yeah. Um, with that artwork and just your artwork in general, are there any like indie artists, major artists, anything like that, that really influence your style or? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, so, I mean, just, I mean, influences, there's, there's so many, you know, every artist always gets asked this and you pull in uh, influences <clears throat> from so many inspiration from so many different places. Yeah. Uh, honestly, as cliche as it might sound, New York is absolutely my biggest, uh, you know, inspiration. But then as the more typical answer, you know, you got the, the typical like John Byrne, Walt Simonson, Jeff Darrow, um, uh, Jim Lee, Travis Sharris, you know, they're, they're, I mean, the list, honestly, it, it can go on and on. John Paul Leon, Bernard Chang, you know, Cliff Chang, all these guys, like there's so many, you can learn so much from all these guys, but you really got to look at real life and, and, and real things. But what's funny about it is, you know, I've never considered myself like the most dynamic or exciting artist. I'm more detail oriented, you know. So when I started the work for that art show, I made a conscious decision to like, I'm going to Jeff Darrow the hell out of these pieces. <laughs> Jeff Darrow is like, he's all about small details. And like, I'm like, I'm just going to draw every brick. I'm going to draw every tile on the wall, every brick, you know, on the ground. I'm going to draw every piece of trash that's floating around. I'm, I'm just, I'm going to totally Jeff Darrow this thing, you know. So the reason why that is important is because Jeff Darrow is actually drawing the cover for my book. I was like, the coolest that, that's thing. literally what I was just doing because you said Jeff Darrow, and I was like, that name sounds so familiar, like oh, well, from yeah, something that I literally just read pictures. today. And I, it's because I was on the Kickstarter, and I was like, who is doing those variant covers for you? So I was like, quickly trying to do it poorly. Is that oh. is that so, who you were talking about? Before we started recording, that called you at this morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's okay, not yeah. bad. That's yeah. No, but he's he's like uh, one of my artistic heroes, and uh, I've had the honor of getting to know him. And he's made a couple T-shirts with me. Um, he actually drew a cover for my last book, Legend. Um, and yeah, he's he's been a good friend for. Geez, I'm not even sure. It's been it's been a while now. Dude, that's so cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, and, and actually, Jeff was kind of the one that championed this second surge of donation money, if you will. Because, um, you know, I was, I'm paying everyone that, that's working on this project. And Jeff, mm. after he saw that I donated money already, he called me and he's like, you know, I've made a lot of money off the Asian culture. And after I saw what you did, I think I want to donate my pay to you know, help stop Asian hate. So that's how I, I got back into the conversation where, you know, it felt a little hollow to just click on a button. So then we talked about it a little bit more and then we were like, fuck it, let's just hand deliver cash to small businesses. You know? Yeah, that's so cool. Oh <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. Um, so, the, yeah, so anyways, my last one kind of got answered a while ago. But uh, if your vision of the Monkey King ever got adapted into film, whether it be a live action or um, a animation... Uh, who would you do? You have anybody that comes to mind who you'd want to play for either a voice actor or a live yeah. action? I mean, so uh, I'm actually talking. And this is very, 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 very preliminary, but I've Exclusive. it's been floated out there for a animated film. Dude, that's, that's awesome! That's incredible. Because it, because it is uh, again, I'm not trying to brag, but I do think this is a very uh, original take on the market. Yeah. You know, uh, and it's definitely a new, fresh facelift for him. So I do think it's kind of necessary to just renew interest in this brand. Yeah. But I've always, cause the, the monkey King is, you know, he's kind of a wise ass and uh, there's, I have a, f a friend of mine who's an actor. He's, his name is Parry Shen. He was a star of the movie better luck tomorrow. And he's now on a uh, general hospital, but he's, yes. you know, when you watch his, his work, he's a very serious actor. He's an amazing actor. He really is. But knowing him, He's kind of a snarky wise ass. You know? okay. And he's really funny. And he would really, 
be perfect as the Monkey King. And for Pigsy, um, you know, Pigsy is supposed to be a, a guy. I, I've converted converted Pigsy into a girl because I just think it's cooler. And I can't help, I, I can't help but think Missy Elliott would be so awesome. Missy Elliott, <laughs> I mean, I just, she'd be awesome. so cool. <laughs> <laughs> She's so freaking cool. You know? <laughs> But that's yeah, badass. That's as far as I got with who I would, would think, you know. <laughs> right on. That's pretty cool. No, that that's awesome. Like, I would love to see this get yeah. adapted. Hell yeah! I mean, I'm I'm excited to to like read the entire graphic novel and like get it from start to finish. Um, because I mean, really, for me, all that I've really had is you know what I've read on the internet. <laughs> you know, yeah. Like, uh, and I. And I watched a shit version of it on <laughs> Prime Test. <laughs> <So, laughs> oh man. I'm but glad I'm that. glad <laughs> Yeah, she was that. Yeah. I'm yeah. I'm Never glad that no you that. Uh, I'm glad that you said it was the bad one because like when I watched it I was kind of feeling that. You know, like this is not that oh, good. Uh, and it, the most recent versions are quite literally like the worst. <laughs> oh really? Okay. Yeah. I was like trying to suck some like sort of like what can I take from this to ask in the in the well, interview and I was like <laughs> you know, it's part of the reason why the younger generation of Asian Americans are not interested in Monkey King anymore because they keep diluting the story and they keep just making it you know something that it's not supposed to be like of course there's going to be comfort of course there's going to be action yeah but yeah. it's not supposed to be only about that you know mm-hmm. yeah. and the Monkey King he's not like I said he's not supposed to be Bruce Lee you know like Leave that to Bruce Lee. You know? Yeah, yeah. Um, he's, of course, he can fight. That's his thing. But he's supposed to be, you know, snarky. He's supposed to be a wise ass. He's got to be funny, you know. So if in your funny, then what's the point? You know. In your version of it, you had kind of mentioned earlier that in the original version, it's that he travels west to like get in- Buddhism from the Indians, um, and then so in your version, you said they're going to travel to West End. Uh, to uh, to West Coast. To, West uh, Coast, got you, sorry. In San Francisco, Chinatown. And they're kind of going to hit every Chinatown along the way. Awesome. But finish in, in San Francisco and then um, bring what they, their, their learnings, you know, from what they pick up from this travel, this journey, back to New York to save New York. That's awesome. I That's like so that. Cool. And they're, and you said your drawings are like more like urban wear, like hoodies and like sneakers yeah, and stuff so like that. Yeah, so instead of picking out which, you know, breastplate to match their, you know, shoulder pads, they're picking which Nikes match their hoodie the best, you know? That's so awesome. That's Pigsy, so all, Pigsy only wears Adidas. You know, Sandy only wears Fila, and Monkey only wears Nike. So, like, I love it. don't argue about that and everything. And then uh, of the Monk, I've got her wearing, like, uh, what do you call this, a Crocs, which they, they're all going to give her grief over, you know? <laughs> I love that. That's amazing. You you can't hate on the Crocs though they're comfortable. <laughs> That's her argument. And they have <laughs> they have a battle mode. You just when you go on a journey the, across the you know across back country, and... you got to be comfortable. You know? Exactly. <laughs> That's incredible. I'm glad she gets it. <laughs> Hopefully that wisdom rubs off on them too. And by the end they're all wearing Crocs. Yeah. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> yeah, probably not that, but. <laughs> So, <laughs> sorry. Uh, but yeah, so, uh, I mean, just a, a little bit more about you, Jerry. I mean, we are, I mean, we talk about all things nerdy. Are there any, like, super nerdy projects that are coming out that you're excited about? Like, comic-related, graphic novels, just art in general, or... Well, I mean, you know, I, I can't help but notice that Shang Chi is coming out. You know? Yeah, <laughs> dude. <That laughs> so I so cool. say, like, you know, when Shang Chi was announced, a lot of the Asian American community just let out a major groan and a big eye roll because I was like, it's just going to be a shitty kung fu movie. Like, who are we kidding? Like, the Shang Chi story is not a very good one. It's not. It, I mean, in its concept, in its birth, it's just a Bruce Lee ripoff. When it came out, they just wanted to make a Bruce Lee comic because Bruce Lee was so cool back then, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, so I was kind of like, man, this is just going to be a really bad kung fu movie. A cliche, corny, with terrible humor kung fu movie, you know? 
then I saw the trailer, and I gotta say, it looks pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> I think it looks cool. I watched I'm it excited like, for it. I watched the trailer like three times, like right when I dropped. I was like, holy shit, that looks so good. <clears throat> so, yeah, yeah. I, I am pretty excited over that. Um, the, besides that, it's just the typical stuff. You know, I'm looking forward to Loki. Yeah. Yeah, Have you I, been watching any of the like WandaVision and then um I hated WandaVision. I wanted Really? Oh no. <laughs> really? I, I loved Falcon and Winter Soldier. I yeah. Okay. Just, so you've redeemed awesome. yourself a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I mean WandaVision to me, the first like four episodes could have been done in one episode in my opinion. Yeah. Just, yeah. It did take it took a long time to get where they but, were going. I'm okay with slow pacing, but stuff has to happen. Yeah. Just slow doesn't mean nothing happens. You know? Yeah. Right. <laughs> Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, I can. I mean, we were we were lucky enough that when we actually started covering WandaVision, we covered the first four episodes in one episode. Yep. Yeah. So. <laughs> if you jam it all into one episode, it's probably going to be much better. You know. Right. Yeah. That's, yeah, it's cool. That's yeah. Very fair. Falcon and the Winter Soldier was amazing, and then yeah, I can't wait for Loki. That's what next month, June, or is yeah, it July? In June. In June. June. Uh, yeah. I just finished watching Invincible last night. I just finished the. I watched the the last episode again this morning because I loved it so much. It's so good. What What do you think of it? I mean, I liked it a lot. I I don't remember it being that that fast in the comics. So I'm going to reread the the trades. Hmm. But uh, I mean, it, it was great. I liked it. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm really happy that they renewed it for two more seasons. You know. I yeah. Cool. Yeah. yeah we sure. mentioned that in our last uh, podcast. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so I haven't, about it. That I haven't read the fun. comics for it, but yeah. I I want to because oh the comics are awesome. They're they're so much better than the car. The cartoon's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. I'll tell you, the comics are that good. <laughs> well, I mean, I believe it based on you know how the the show went and who's behind it and everything like that. So yeah, um, uh, so yeah, so like as you know now because we talked about it before we started recording, but. Um, one of the things that we do on the show is we always have a cocktail in hand. Uh, what do you? What is your drink of choice? Or what are you drinking? I am drinking uh, Oban Fourteen Year. It's my favorite drink. I love whiskey. I love Japanese whiskeys. I love Kabbalan. It's a Taiwanese whiskey. But I gotta say, you try out all these new fancy drinks. They're super expensive, super trendy, and it's always you know a lot of fun to try them out. I can't help but keep. Going back to Oban is just the yummiest out of all of them. <laughs> How do you spell it? I'm going to write it down. I'm going to try it. O B A N. Oh, that's super. You yeah, prob- that's you very probably easy could to guess remember. That. Yeah, it really <laughs> is. Fantastical. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'm going to check it out. 14 year. All right. And I do like Shivas 18 year as well, actually. That's another Shivas? One. Yeah. That <laughs> very is very underrated. Good. Yeah. So, you know, Jerry, where where can people find you uh, online if they want to, you know, first off, like, back the Kickstarter, but also if they just want to, like, follow your art and uh, You know, else. I guess I'm, I'm on a few of the social media things, but I, I'm most active on Instagram, uh, where my handle is Epic Props. Epic um, Props. Website is just epicprops.com. And obviously right now I'm, I'm doing this Kickstarter until June 4th. Um, we are We hit our goal in under 48 hours. So right That's now amazing. we're all about the stretch goals. So, you know, back the campaign, get the book, and give back to the community. Um, oh, yeah. The if you just go to Kickstarter and do a search for the Monkey King under comics and graphic novels, it, it I, I believe it show, pops up pretty quick because like we became a project that Kickstarter loves in like the first three hours. Um, everything's awesome. honestly like I was scared. I was really skeptical. I was on the phone with my friend at, right before I launched it and I was like I feel like it's going to fail and then literally like three hours later it became a project that you know Kickstarter loved and I can't like I've never experienced anything like this I'm not someone that gets good luck you know um, and this has been pretty amazing you know? um, and I just can't wait to give back money to small businesses honestly oh, I think yeah. it's so much fun um, I, you know, I was fortunate enough to, I've, I've been interviewed by the local news station here in New York called NY1 News. Uh, they randomly interviewed me at New York Comic Con one year just because I had a Mets shirt on. And the, the guy, the reporter, is a Mets fan. So he's like, fuck it, I'm going to interview this guy, you know. His <laughs> name is Roger Clark. He's awesome. And then he, coincidentally enough, for uh, my art show, it was during the um, 
Lunar New Year. So he came to Pearl River to check out Pearl River. And then when he realized that I had an art show there, he requested that I get interviewed again. So he, we kind of know each other because we talked about the Mets and everything. And then I just floated it to him. I was like, hey, Roger, just want to let you know, like, I'm going to be donating some money to, like, small business in Chinatown. I don't know, man. Like, I'm not asking for anything, but I just wanted you to know. And then he was just like, we'll follow you around. Let's do it. You know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> this, Dude, that's so this, cool. this is what New York needs right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, not just from this past year, but, like, just in general. I mean, what, what yeah. you're doing is huge. Because, like you said, you know, you you fall into the the realm of you know you click donate and you're like, I feel good and you're like, but did it do good? Yeah, yeah you. Know, it, so like I, by I what you're doing, it's so much more. You know, like you just again, like I, my family, we have a small business. We're suffering right now, and then you're talking about all this money going to small business. I'm like, we didn't get any of that. Yeah, who? Where is it? Like, where is it going? Yeah, you know? and look, not that two hundred and fifty dollars is going to save any business at all. But I would think if someone came into our store and handed my dad two hundred fifty dollars and said it's because he was kickstarting a comic, yeah, that would mean a lot to our family. You know, yeah. like what it represents is yeah. more than the money itself. You know, yeah. yeah, that's amazing. So I cannot wait to like this is I've been dying. I was hoping that this. So I had made the decision like whether or not I, I hit this goal, I'm going to be donating money. I don't even care if I lose money. I don't even care if I lose yeah. money. I know I got to do this. You know, so. The fact that we've already hit our first stretch goal, and I think we're like just like three hundred dollars away from the second stretch goal. Yeah, I've I've kind of already decided that I don't even care. Like the stretch goal tiers are basically just there as a formality. I'm just going to go ahead and like donate a bunch of money to. Yeah, I don't even care anymore. You know. And then you said the the guy from the news. Did you say his name was Ryan Clark? Uh, Roger Clark. He's the Roger man. Clark. I'm so sorry. Uh, he's going to follow you around and kind of videotape yeah. it. That's because awesome. New York needs some good stories nowadays yeah yeah I, yeah hopefully this can be one of them you know i, I don't know yeah. man i love that i mean i would just I mean, talking to you i would say it's definitely yeah. a good story like it's I mean, gonna be a, one of those you know it's a comic stories. a comic book is gonna get to do this i think that's fucking awesome <laughs> yeah that's like the best thing in the world yeah for, got, especially for us everyone that's backed this book so far like thank you so much for letting me do this for letting me and our team have the opportunity to give money back to the community and like have something positive happen, you know? There's yeah. attacks on Asian people literally every single day here in New York. So the fact that we get to do this is just gonna be so freaking awesome. And I have no one to thank but everyone that's backed this book so far. That's Fuck awesome. Yeah, dude. So so plug the the Kickstarter one more time. Like do you do you have like a specific URL that uh, it, like gets people there quickly or should people just Go to Kickstarter and so search Kickstarter, it. Yeah, kickstarter.com and under the search, just look up the Monkey King. Then it'll ask like under which category. It's obviously a comic book. And I, it usually, typically, because I've been, my anxiety has been going nuts and I've been checking it like every two seconds. It's basically, <laughs> it always pops up near the top, Thanks, thankfully, because we hit our goal so quickly. Um, and because it's a project that Kickstarter loves. So it's near the top of the search engine. Um, awesome. It, you know, like there's a picture of a, the, like the, the crew hanging out at the subway station. So, you know, that if that helps, makes it any easier for people to find. But if they go to my, my Instagram, there's obviously a link on my Instagram profile. Um, and yeah. And like, what was that again? That was uh, Epic, Epic Props. Props? Yeah. Okay. And, you know, please feel free to shoot me any questions. I, 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 I respond to everybody. Um, yeah. I think it's important. And, uh, and I love explaining the, the stretch goals to people. Like, I can't get enough of that. I think it's probably one of the best things I've ever done with my life. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I mean, with that being said, I mean, we're just kind of going to wrap up the the episode just really quickly. Um, I mean, obviously thank you again so much, Jerry, for, yeah. for making time to, to yeah. come on our show. Um, no, guys, we're so, we're for so excited for, for the, the yeah. comic to release. Yeah. Um, and actually get our hands on it. Cause <laughs> <clears throat> for other people <laughs> our, our listeners um you know we're we're going to be uh doing some giveaways with some of jerry's stuff because we are gonna be uh giving to this kickstarter because it's an incredible incredible yeah. project 
and the art is so cool just from like the little teasers that you see on the kickstarter it looks so cool i'm so excited um but yeah so on top of that uh we did launch our patreon page uh a couple weeks ago uh we're gonna have some bonus extra behind the scenes uh from this interview uh with jerry that um you know might not make it on youtube of us joking around and Jerry telling Jake that he watched the shittiest version. The shit uh, version. Possible. Oh, man. <laughs> and just watching so Jake's bummed. just I motivation it. die on the inside. I, uh, I told I told Chad before we before you guys joined the meeting, I was like, watch him tell me I watched like the worst possible version <laughs> of this movie. Yeah. So that was a bummer. Uh, let's let's uh, give away some t-shirts for the Patreon members, man. Yeah. So yeah. when we're done recording, we'll just have you stick around and we'll exchange some information and because awesome. we're gonna send you some stuff too. So yeah. Awesome. So we'll definitely yeah. do that. And then also, um, it's the month of May, so that's Mustache May. So oh, for the next week uh, leading up to our live stream, we are doing a competition. Anyone who votes either hashtag Team Jake or hashtag Team Chad on any of our posts. Uh, oh. You vote for which host you like more, and the loser has to shave a mustache of the winner's choice. Uh, and we'll do that live uh, on the 15th when we do our next episode. With that being said, Jerry. What do you say, Jerry? Are you, are you Team Chad or Team Jake? You know, I, is there a way I can choose like someone else, a third party, so you guys both got to lose? <laughs> let's just, let's just, let's well, just if, do it this if way. If we tie, we both will shave. <laughs> With that being said, I am winning by a margin. <laughs> Which is well, funny to me because I work Chad, for, I work from home. That kind of gets the a leg up just because he's got the bigger beard and everything, you know. Son of a bitch. <laughs> Wait, so are you saying you would rather have me in a mustache or Jake in a mustache? You know, I'd kind of like to see Jake with the handlebars. Ah, oh, good dear. <laughs> you heard it here, everybody. Jerry Ma is ah. Team Chad. I'm not going to lie. It's pretty interesting, you know. Son of a gun. <laughs> Shit. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. That's not what I wanted to hear from you, Jerry. <laughs> Alan voted for Chad, too. That makes me so mad. <laughs> it's the full beard. It's hard to beat that, you know. I just shaved. Mine was probably bigger than that. I just shaved it down like we, a month yeah, ago. Yeah, we were pretty close. And then he was like, it's getting warm. And he like shaved it down. And I was like, you're weak. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, with that, we're going we're gonna to go ahead and cheers out our episode. So, uh, Jerry, Take it away, you, you want to be the one to close us out? Well, gentlemen, it's been a pleasure. And... Uh, this is all things nerd podcast, boy, baby. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Thanks, dude.